Uh, I want to thank you for your attendance here at um, First Sunday. Uh, my class is called the uh, Financial Literacy 101 class. And um, as you can see, I got a little different setup for those of you who are used to coming to my program, right? I'm trying to use this technology out here that's available to us. Right? And um, to make it a little easier, and that we all can enjoy it. So, um, I'm going to abbreviate the class uh, because we started a little late, uh, but I hope that what I'll cover will be something that you can, uh, can gain from. So the um, title of the class today is, um, well, let's, let me do a little uh, refresher. The title of the class is uh, Financial Literacy 101, and um, by way of uh, refreshing, because we haven't met or haven't held the class uh, for a couple of weeks, I mean a couple of months, the um, textbook for our class is uh, Rich Dad's uh, Cash Flow Quandary. It's authored by Robert Kiyosaki. All right? and, um, it's Rich Dad's Guide to Financial Freedom. And the goal with um, the presentation, and our goal financially, is to become financially free. Financially free. Uh, not to get wealthy, not to get rich, but to get financially free. And some may ask, okay, what's the difference between being wealthy and rich and being financially free? Well, I'm gonna give you the definition of being wealthy. It's his definition, anyway, of wealthy. But let me give you all this definition of being financially free. Um, being financially free is having investments to the degree where you have a steady stream of income, where you don't have to work and no one in your home has to do any physical work to maintain your standard of living. That's to become financially free. All right? You don't have to work and no one in your home has to work to maintain your standard of living. That's what he means by being financially free. Now there will be some people who are wealthy, who have great wealth, but they have to go to work every day or every month or whatever to maintain that wealth. All right? Or those who say they're rich, but they continue to entertain ball players, continue to play, play ball, and if they stop playing, their income stops. All right? So the key here is uh, to become financially free is to develop the assets that will provide you with income, so that an ongoing income so that you don't have to work and no one in your home has to work. Now that's our goal. That's our goal. Alright, so to get to that goal, and by way of a little ref ref um, review, the cash flow corner. This is a picture of the cash flow corner if you all remember, and for those who don't, um, it says that the E stands for employee. S for self-employed, B for business owner, and I for investor, all right? And really, this is really just a, um, a visual tool. It's a visual tool which helps you understand the financial impact of where you choose to earn your income, all right? Where you choose to earn your income. Uh, so this is just a financial, I mean, a, phys a, a, a visual tool. Now, this is a little bit more refined tool, all right? Uh, what the E stands for now, and you get a little bit of understanding, the E says you have a job. If you're in the S quadrant, you own a job. Understand that. S quadrant is those who are self-employed. You own a job. Now, this is on the left side of the quadrant. On the right, right side, you're a business owner or you own a business system and people work for you. And in the I quadrant, which is investor, your money works for you, all right? 
So I'll leave that up there. Start with um, the, how he defines wealth. So what does it mean to be, to be wealthy or to achieve wealth? Wealth is measured by the number of days you can survive without physically working and by anyone in your home or your household physically working and still maintain your standard of living. Okay? So, your degree of wealth is determined by how many days you can survive without physically working and no one in your home physically working and you can maintain your standard of living. It's not much and it's not how much money you make that matters. Now you all have heard this before, right? But it's how much money you want. Come on, just come on. Hey, that's all okay then. We, we, we all learning, okay? So there's no bad answers, all right? All right, all right. So it's how much money you keep. But now add a little something to that. And how long that money works for you. Now see, this is the part that we haven't been familiar with. We have always been familiar with how much money you keep. But what we haven't been familiar with is how much time, how long that money works for you. The, the important thing is to have your money working for you and not you just working for money, all right? So, uh, since the subject today is OPT, I said this out, I just said capital OPT and OPM. So what do those mean? I said I'm going to tell you what I got here today. Well, OPT means other people's time. And OPM means other people's money. All right? And what he says is a lot of people think to achieve great wealth and to get rich, some people believe the secret is to use other people's time and other people's money. All right? Well, I say there's some truth to that. It's really how you accept that statement and, and how, you, how, you, uh, how you value the statement and how you apply it. Uh, but let me just tell you where these line up on the uh, quadrant. O, uh, PT and PM, people's time and people's money, that is on the right side of the quadrant. Okay? On the right side. The other people in the example are found on the left side of the quadrant. Alright? So, did y'all get that? The other people on the left side of the point. So, if we were to look at this in a negative way, because you can look at it both positively and negatively. If we were going to look at it in a negative way, to use other people's money, you know, you, um, you, know, you, you can sell them subprime loans. Uh, what I mean by subprime loans, you know, you can charge them high interest on your loans. You know, uh, or um, uh, mortgage fraud. That's, that's misusing people. And that's the negative aspect of it. Um, underhanded foreclosures. Uh, if you all been reading the news in the paper today, uh, for the last year, you know, many people are losing their homes, but they're losing their homes because they were sold a bill of goods, but they got it. All right? They were, they, so that's, that's really using people. And really misusing them. That's really what it is. All right? But let's look at it positively. Other people's time. You can employ people in your business and pay them a decent wage, all right? And make them valuable in your business. And you can get bank loans or other loans to help build your business. So let me ask you this. When you employ someone in your business, but you pay them a good wage, whose time are you using? Whose time are you using? You're using their time, right? Other people. Uh, when you go to the bank to borrow money to build your business, Say you need a say you need a million dollars to take your business to the next level. You go borrow it. Whose money are you using? Other people's money. Other people's money. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that as long as you do it in a positive way. All right. Um, and we're all about doing things in a positive way and in the right way. So let me go down this road of money making money. So listen to this. Um, <clears throat> What I'm going to tell you here, regardless of how much money people make, ultimately they should put some in the I quadrant. In the I 